And today is November 8. It marks one year since Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi brought demonetization into action. It was a move meant to root out unaccounted wealth, stem terror financing and curb counterfeiting. Ruling BJP party will today celebrate the occasion as anti-black money day. Many prominent leaders, ministers, MPs and MLAs of BJP will conduct a variety of events across the country. To highlight, we can say that achievements made in one year. And it's the first year and a lot of things have happened. 83% of demonetization money has returned to banks. Around 17.77 lakh crore rupees is in circulation, was in circulation before note ban and rupees 16,000 crore still hasn't been returned to banks and 73 lakh cases they were had they have been registered where deposits did not match depositor and around 3.68 lakh crore is under suspicion from 280 uh, around 23 lakh bank accounts and 4.7 lakh transactions reported suspicious and so that is the overall situation. Let's take a... Today, Opposition Congress Party will observe the first demonetization anniversary with protests terming the day as Black Day across the country. Last year, on the same day, India had undertaken this exercise of demonetization and that's what actually happened that day. Bharatiya Janata Party ki or se हम लोग ये मानते हैं कि देश की अर्थव्यवस्था और देश के व्यापक भविष्य के लिए जो यथास्थितिवाद स्टेटस को था उसको बदलना अति अनिवार्य था द स्टेटस को नीडेड टू बी शेकन अप Last year on November 8, Prime Minister Modi made a stunning announcement and stunned everyone by abolishing 500 and 1000 rupee notes, removing 86% of currency in circulation so as to crack down on a shadow economy being run majorly by black money to curb financing of Islamic militant outfits also which had been using fake 500 rupee notes to fund operations in India. Finance Minister of India Arun Jaitley also spoke about why this change was needed. नंबर ऑफ इंडिविजुअल टैक्स असेसीज उसकी संख्या नॉर्मल की तुलना में बढ़ने लगी डिजिटल ट्रांजैक्शंस बढ़े हैं हाई डिनोमिनेशनल करेंसी कुछ मात्रा में स्क्वीज की गई है टेरर फंडिंग के ऊपर एक बड़ा स्क्वीज लगा है and meanwhile, the ruling party BJP and leading opposition party Congress are engaged in a war of words. Congress party led by former PM Manmohan Singh attacked the Modi government. Finance Minister Arun Jaitley, however, led the central zibatal. Here is what they had to say. A former prime minister and the current finance minister engaged in a war of words over demonetization. While one calls it an organized loot, the other terms it a watershed moment for India's economy. I say it with immense pain and a sense of deep responsibility that the 8th of November was a black day for our economy and indeed for our democracy. Nishithi ek watershed moment jise kehte hain. A day before the central government's demonetization decision completes a year, the opposition mounts a fresh attack on the centre. The finance minister hits back. More than 99% of the demonetized currency came back into the banking system has punctured the government's claims. More money in the bank, more money in mutual funds, more money in the capital markets, more money in insurances. 
और ये अपने आप में फॉर्मल इकोनॉमी में अधिक साधन जाए उसके संकेत में जाता है एंड इट डिट स्टॉप दे वाल द फॉर्मर प्राइम मिनिस्टर फाइंस नो मेरिट इन द गवर्नमेंट डिमोनिटाइजेशन क्लेम्स द फाइनेंस मिनिस्टर अरुण जेटली क्वेश्चन द कांग्रेस इज ट्रैक रिकॉर्ड डिमोनिटाइजेशन हैज प्रूव टू बी मेयर ब्लस्टर देयर प्राइमरी ऑब्जेक्ट इज टू सर्व द फैमिली एंड वेर ज्वाइन बाय कॉरेस्पॉन्डेंट uh uh from newsroom uh first of all i would like to ask you archana uh what has been the ground reality how do you see the first year of demonetization from that day to this day what has changed and what has not changed good morning sumit uh, you know one thing i would like to say that until 8 november 2016 i don't know how many people actually knew what demonetization was remember that night of uh, 8 november at 8 pm prime minister modi set the ground for a big announcement everyone was taken aback our newsrooms the common man other political parties in fact a lot of people in the ruling government did not know what he was about to do from then on we saw challenges one after the other we saw people queuing up outside atms banks uh, you know uh, to take cash to withdraw cash because suddenly 5000 and 1000 rupees were banned from the system however in the coming period of time we saw a lot of reports where uh, you know there was a death toll uh, that was rising though the, the figures vary from one report to the other the number of deaths that were reported um, and uh, in that uh, scenario in that scenario what really happened was uh, lately when the rbi came out saying that 99% of cash is back in the system a lot of questions were raised on modi government's demonetization plan especially the politics of it heated up after that and as far as ground realities are concerned one thing that's happened uh, in the wake of demonetization is that uh, the digital payments have increased the use of paytm and the likes the uh, people now uh, mostly uh, they're using uh, paytm and digital methods to uh, carry out their day to day transactions so with archana stay with us we are joined by prominent economist suyaj bhat from mumbai a uh, good morning to you, mr bhat first of all i would like to ask you a day after demonetization uh, what has changed for the economy and in which uh, direction economy is headed according to you uh, morning sumit Uh, in uh, exactly a year back we had uh, run on your channel itself a uh, coverage on what is the impact and how it would change the whole uh, uh, you know uh, economy per se the move was intended to bring the you know uh, informal economy into a formal one so there was a parallel cash based economy which uh, is unprecedented and uh, as you have more cash transactions in the system you have lesser and lesser Uh, you know tax collection and thereby you know have a high inflation and a high interest rate regime mm. the demonetization should ideally uh, should have brought down the circulation of cash and you know increase the uh, uh, tax revenue to the exchequer but uh, i believe uh, i mean as we see read the data i mean currently the amount of uh, money in the circulation last year was 17 lakh 77000 crores and this year it's a 15 lakh 89000 crore so you have effectively only 10% circulation of cash which has gone down so i would have expected maybe more than 40 50% of cash usage gone down and maybe more of digital payments uh, shooting up and also an ecosystem getting created because there was a wonderful opportunity to for the entire country to come on board on a digital payment system and uh, but uh, there are a lot of teething challenges also of when it comes to like uh, say for example paytm or any of these e wallets that are there there are uh, they they do charge you amount if you want to transfer from your uh, wallet to a bank so all these charges transaction charges that we have uh, in the range of 1 to 2% are probably deterrent for many who want to come into this system because if i carry cash it's so it's it's no cost for me right the the cost is only for the bank so uh, e wallets uh, the opportunity they made a lot of money in this process but as an economy i'm really this uh, economists are really disappointed because i i would have expected at least half of uh, cash circulation uh, to have uh, you know uh, gone down in the economy but that has not happened only 10% or so has gone down absolutely uh, mr bhat and stay just stay with us i'll go back to my colleague uh, archana uh, archana uh, this war of words happening between congress and bjp on this occasion since yesterday the war of tweets is also taking place do you think that in in uh, going in future 
this day will be uh, regarded as the day when the two, uh, we can say that political party fought over black money and this day will be known more for the black money fight than for every, everything else and all pain will be forgotten. Yes, you're right. You know, and a lot of people are saying that history will judge uh, Narendra Modi for the step that he's taken. In fact, uh, as uh, we speak about politics, remember this morning Rahul Gandhi has said that uh, demonetization is a tragedy. And today he will be spending a day in Surat with uh, traders who he claims have been massively hit by the GST and demonetization. And as we speak of war of words, the Congress has left no opportunity to slam the BJP. Just yesterday we saw the former Indian Prime Minister Manmohan Singh call GST. GST and demonetization a monumental failure. He called it a disaster. He gave out all statistics saying how the BJP government has failed massively A to uh, push the economy into the growth trajectory. He cited job losses. He said uh, the, the economy is on a downward spiral, citing the GDP numbers, the inflation data and the growth data. But if you talk about the other opposition parties, and remember today the 18 political parties are carrying out a black, sort, black day to oppose demonetization. They'll be carrying out protests across the country. And as a counter, the BJP will be uh, carrying out an anti-black day. What they will be doing is that ministers from the BJP will highlight uh, the benefits of demonetization. So remember, more than the economic uh, aspect of it, it's now become a political war of words. And but one interesting thing that uh, you know we have to see is that the common man, though, like we said, that we cannot ignore the deaths that have happened. You know, the traders have suffered. But in a lot of elections, Narendra Modi has been uh, rewarded one election after the other after demonetization. Take for example, UP. UP election was a huge surprise. Not many people expected that. Uh, the BJP will come to power after that massive demonetization policy that was announced last year. But he was rewarded and how? Rewarded and how? Unprecedented numbers in the UP Assembly. So we have to wait and watch. It's been a year. It's been a year. But again, you cannot ignore the fact that 99% of the cash is uh, back in the system. And I'm sure more uh, learned economists can throw the light on the statistics better. But yes, the political war certainly has uh, heated up in uh, the country. Thank you, Arjuna, for getting us all these details. And let's take a look at what has happened in the last one year. How Indian economy has fared over the last one year. The overall growth in digital payments has increased in 2017 versus 2016. The credit card usage is up by around 24%. What well, that has happened in a matter of one year, credit card usage is up by 24%. The POS systems, they have registered a growth of around 100%. They have doubled POS system, our point of sale system. This is the system when we go and swipe our cards in and the swarm machines, these are called POS systems. They have registered around 100% growth. Their number has doubled over one year. So a lot of benefits which have accrued to the economy and but still a long way to go as far as POS terminal per million people are concerned. India is still at a small meager 2200 number to per million people. Australia look at look there it's 40,000 per million people as far as POS terminals are concerned they are the point of sale terminals. Canada has around 40,000 again India has just 10 percent or less than 10 percent of it just 2200. Singapore has a whopping 34,000 or around 33,500 POS terminals. So India is very, still very low when compared to these countries in matter of digitization. I would go back to my uh, uh, economist, uh, Mr. Suyaj Bhatt from Mumbai. Uh, Mr. Bhatt, I would again uh, like to ask you, how has this overall you know, exercise over the last one year pushed India towards digitization of economy and how will it benefit government, consumers, all the stakeholders. Right. Uh, so with uh, one very significant move that has happened out of this is, uh, you know, formation of uh, uh, UPI and, uh, you know, the Jan Trinity, as we are popularly call, you know, the Jandan, Aadhaar and the mobile. The mobile penetration is at a record high. And uh, I believe uh, the, it's, it's right. Uh, the stage is set for... Uh, you know, digital transactions to pick up. Now, there needs to be some kind of a, a change in behavior that needs to be induced. And uh, I believe the government needs to do a little bit more to induce that. Like uh, even developed economies like, you know, South Korea had to introduce a 5% bad uh, benefit if you transact online. Whereas if you pay in cash, uh, you have to pay the entire tax. So some kind of incentivization has to be brought in because it's more about uh, now change in behavior to be induced in common man rather than 
you know, creating facility. We have created world-class facilities like India Stacks, which even countries like UK and Australia are now trying to study and implement in their country. And uh, to a great extent, if we see, you know, globally also, like a country like has 98% of, uh, you know, digital payments. And uh, there was a reason for that. There were a lot of bank robberies which were happening, which pushed them to move towards digital currency. And you just cross the sea and you find Germany where 80% of transactions happen in cash. Mm -hmm. So it's more about mm -hmm. behavior of, uh, you know, changing behavior of people and then uh, more of, you know, creating infrastructure. I think in last one year, a lot of infrastructure is created, but Absolutely. now there has to be some kind of a benefit uh, for uh, people to, yeah. Right, Mr. Bhatt, thank you so much for joining us on this day. A year of demonetization has happened. It was exactly an year ago. We all were shocked what has happened. And later on, now we are still debating the benefits or is it a pain or a gain? It will keep on happening. That's what we think at this moment.